Hey there, Mission Control. I'm not really sure how to do this particular video, so I'm just kind of playing around. Um, the intention is that I get you up to speed with some of the decisions and the analysis that I've been making with respect to um, the insulation and the heating. So I have some stuff on the computer here that I want to show you, and then um, maybe we can go to the whiteboard if we need to, but I think I'll probably get most of it done uh, here with Excel. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out the computer. Okay, so one of the first things that we needed to do is figure out a very important number, which is the total surface area of the building that is exposed. So here's the building. We want to know everything that's outside and on the end. So these calculations here, uh, this is in feet. So I'm taking the building is 80 feet long and it's 21 feet high. And that gives a surface area for this particular wall. I'm assuming just a rectangle, by the way. So uh, I'm not trying to actually compensate for the arches at all. The reason I'm doing that is by assuming a rectangular building I am actually creating a little bit of a conservative estimate because the building's actually smaller than what I'm estimating. Uh, but I, that's okay that I'm creating that uh, conservative value because on the other side when I'm looking at heat loss from the building it's probably a little bit more uh, because the building's not perfectly sealed. So um, anyway that's just little word there about accuracy. So I have the first wall uh, and the second wall. These are the long ones and then I have the two end walls and then you actually have the ceiling on top. So you have five sides total and we're not counting the ground. That gives us a total of 8,240 square feet uh, of area that we actually need to uh, keep track of uh, heat loss. So before, if you followed along, I'm, I have a very big thermal model and it took me weeks to put it together and it was within a few degrees Fahrenheit of accuracy last year and it's going to take me a while to update it to these new numbers. So I wanted a way to go a little bit faster in my calculations and uh, enter the internet. I have uh, this nice website here, it's uh, thelittlegreenhouse.com. I think they have one of the best calculators. There, there's plenty of calculators out there that you can use. But essentially you type in the area the minimum value that it's going to be outside, the inside temperature you want, and the heat loss value, and it'll tell you how many BTU that you actually need. That's pretty cool. So I'm looking at a few different things here when it comes to a trade study on the, uh, the insulation itself. The first one I've looked at, uh, actually I should back up and say I was really looking strongly at the double wall or triple wall polycarbonate, and it's just way too expensive. And um, I'm finding that it's not as good as other solutions that are out there. So I'm going to go with three solutions that are that basically kind of uh, really uh, contain a trade space, you know, so kind of the extreme cases of it. Uh, one of them is not so extreme. The very first one I'm looking at is double air plastic, and that would be insulated, and we talked about that in the last video. Uh, it has an R value of roughly 1.75, and this has to do with its uh, ability to retain heat. The uh, opposite of that, the inverse of it, 1 over the R value, uh, called the heat loss value, uh, is the U value, which is just simply 1 divided by this number. And then uh, you can take these, this information, this U value, and you can type it into the calculator I just showed you, and it'll tell you that you need 336,192 BTU per hour in order to maintain 60 degrees Fahrenheit inside the building and negative 8 Fahrenheit outside the building. So negative 8 was the minimum that we reached last year, which was like one of the worst winters we've ever had. Um, actually, it was the worst winter that we ever had. The only thing that made this one, there was one that was a little bit tougher is because the power went out for eight days, but we have generators now, so uh, on that side of things, it's pretty good. Uh, anyway, so 336,192 BTU per hour is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, so let's look at ways that we can change that uh, by going to different types of insulation. I'm going to skip down here. The next one, I, I actually subscribers recommended this one, right, is foam board and just basically put a foam board all the way on the inside of the building. It has an R value of 10, which means it's better at retaining heat and uh, a U value uh, that shows that it's pretty good at not letting heat out, which makes sense, right? Uh, and it only needs 56,000 BTU per hour in order to maintain the 60, 60 degrees Fahrenheit inside. So uh, we're going to come back to foam board, uh, but the next 
one that we looked at is the one that's actually purpose made. That's the CoverTech uh, actual uh, purpose built insulation. Uh, so let's see here, pull up a picture for you. Um, this insulation is made up in Canada, Canada A, uh, and is pretty darn nice. It's, it's purpose built, so here we go. There you go, you can see it. Uh, it is uh, a combination of plastic and foam, and it's mostly transparent. Uh, it is a little more opaque, uh, so we will have some light loss, which means we have to have more lighting. But with this particular solution, it's pretty nice. Uh, there we go, there's a building that actually has it put up. It, it has everything that we need to install it, uh, and has an R value of 7.5. So it, it sticks up there with uh, Velcro straps. There we go. Let's see if I can find a good picture here. There, oh, there it is. There, right here, you can see these Velcro straps that are hanging right on the uh, the cross members themselves. So this is purpose built, has an R value of 7.5, and uh, that means we need 72,842 BTU per hour. Now the cost of this, just for the materials, is $8,206. So I say $9,000 by the time you get shipping, handling, any spare parts that you might need. Now I did the same thing for the average case, which is 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside with 60 degrees Fahrenheit inside. And you can see the difference here. Um, even if we went double air poly, uh, 187,000 BTU versus 42,848 BTU for the CoverTech. Uh, that's the name of the company, CoverTech. So then I started looking at uh, the cost. So I called our local propane company and found out the cost of propane per gallon uh, is right around, I think it's about buck fifty to two fifty uh, is what the cost is. So I chose two dollars. So as the uh, cost of fuel goes up in the winter time, the cost of propane uh, goes up with it. So that's why I assume two dollars, but they can get it to us at like a dollar fifty. Um, so anyway, two dollars is my estimating factor. So when we look at that, and we look at how much uh, propane we would need per month, uh, based on the different types of covers here, uh, to run propane for six months is, with CoverTech uh, would be two thousand four hundred sixty dollars. Uh, if we were to black it out with foam, uh, which would mean we need a lot more lights. Uh, it would be only $13.92. So foam board uh, is not a bad idea uh, as far as its return on investment goes. You know, you you're, you pay, pay a pretty penny. I think it's about $20 a sheet, and they're 4 foot by 8 foot. Uh, I think I did the calculation somewhere. Uh, boards, yeah. So um, if we lower the ceiling in the, in the building, uh, which is one of the ideas that was brought up, so that's what I did here with this calculation, is I, I lowered the ceiling down to 12 feet, which is where that cable goes across, and I calculated how much it would cost for boards. So on each of the walls, we need you know, 30, 15, 100 boards on the ceiling. So that's 190 boards we would have to install, cut, install, and then you have to figure out how to hang them. Uh, but the price... Uh, isn't that bad? It's $29 a board right now at Home Depot. Excuse me, I misspoke earlier. And uh, so you're looking at, if you lower the ceiling down to 12 feet, you're looking at $5,500. Uh, but that installation is a real bear. Um, how you do that? You probably have hanging cables with nuts on the bottom of them, and then you have to put it up, take it down. 190 boards that you'd have to store uh, during the summertime, spring and summer and fall times. So uh, I'm looking at the CoverTech as my leading solution right now, which means we're looking at a propane bill of roughly $2,460 uh, for the six-month period, which makes which brings us down into the affordable side of things. Otherwise, like I'm not even going to calculate the propane <laughs> for 337,000 BTU uh, per hour for 24 hours a day. That's nuts. Uh, so... Actually, I did, I did do that calculation. Excuse me, I got it right here in front of me, a piece of paper. Uh, the propane would be twenty-eight hundred dollars a month for the full BTU uh, if we only use the double poly. And I also looked at diesel. 
So if we go with the, the maximum BTU that we need, the 336000 and you look at propane, that's $2,800 a month if you only run your heaters for 15 minutes every hour, which is what we did last year. From uh, a heating oil standpoint, which is what we used last year, uh, running them at 15 minutes an hour, you'd have two heaters uh, for both of these propane and oil. Uh, you'd have two heaters, one at each end of the building. That way if one goes out, the other one keeps going. And they both don't have to work as hard either. Uh, for the oil, it was $3,510 per month. <laughs> That's nuts. And then for electricity, if you use a heat pump with an efficiency of 3.2, you can get it down to $982 per month, which makes you start going, hmm, how can we do that? And the answer is geothermal heating. Uh, but that requires some electricity, and uh, it's a little bit of a challenge for us out there right now. Not that we couldn't do it. So I'm going to talk about heating solutions, you know, the propane oil and uh, geothermal in my next video. Uh, we're going to go over that in some more detail. But first I wanted to go over insulation because the conclusion here, it's probably pretty clear to everyone, I'm a little late to the game, but is that the, every dollar you spend on insulation saves you way more than a dollar on fuel cost. If we were to go with the CoverTech uh, insulation, it pays for itself within the first year. Uh, that's pretty phenomenal. So, uh, if, compared to if we didn't use it, we just went with double poly. Actually, I think I did that. Yeah, right here. So, if you went with a double plastic, you're looking at $10,764 for six months worth of fuel. Um, compared to 2460 with this uh, advanced cover from CoverTech. That's uh, a difference of $8,304, and the procurement cost is $8,206. So it pays for itself literally in six months, uh, which makes it pretty much a no-brainer as far as uh, going with that. It's easier to install. Uh, it has a higher R value, pays for itself in the first year, uh, so it's worth the investment. Uh, so, based on that, I've looked at double layer poly. I've looked at uh, the cover tech. I did go look at the cement covers. That's actually how I found cover tech. So thank you for all the, the cement blankets. Thank you for all those recommendations. Um, I think I looked at a few other things. I contacted the supplier of the building and asked them if they build insulation, and they don't. Um, so I think and I've looked at the foam board. I think I've looked at pretty much a fairly large span of solutions for this uh, and I've decided that the uh, the cover tech for us is the right way to go. It certainly pays for itself, at least in theory it does. We'll see what happens in practice. So now I'm going to reach out to cover tech and see uh, if we what we need to do to order it. I think there's going to be lots of measurements I need to go take and then what the lead time is. I'm just hoping that we're not too late for this year. November 11th is right around the corner. So uh, there you go. That's the trade study on the insulation solution. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was informative. If you're just getting into greenhouses, I definitely recommend you go through these steps before you ever get anywhere close to actually uh, building. Uh, I should have thought of it, and I didn't. So that's a big mistake on my part. So hopefully you'll learn from that. Uh, I think that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. In the meantime, everyone, this is Real Martian.